very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of the show. Uh, promises to be exciting as always. We have a lot lined up for your viewing pleasure on the show tonight. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Let me give you a quick rundown of what to expect on the show tonight. At some point, uh, my colleague Austin Okon Ackman will join us on the ride as we take you on a trip across the money spinning world of sports. Tonight, we'll talk a lot of football. Uh, the CAF uh, Confederations Cup uh, will get our attention. Matches played yesterday. We'll look at the CAF Women's Champions League uh, by also uh, Queens in action. We'll talk about them as we go on on the show. We talk about handball. It's been a feast of handball in Lagos. We talk about what's going on. Winners have emerged in uh, the men's and the women's category. We'll give you uh, the details of all of that. As we speak, matches currently going on in the Europa League. Some already uh, concluded. Uh, fun fact, Manchester United uh, finished second uh, in their group uh, despite uh, ending the group uh, on the same number of points as Real Sociedad. We'll talk about that as we uh, move on on the show. FIFA World Cup also gets our attention. A large part of the show tonight will be dedicated to the FIFA uh, World Cup arguably uh, the biggest sporting event on the planet, the Mundial. We'll tell you the number of days to go. We'll profile a couple of teams. We'll give you our news around the teams. What's happening with the players? We'll do that all for you on the show uh, tonight. Uh, and of course, we have uh, a guest uh, willing and ready uh, to help us uh, with all the things uh, we're looking at. Before uh, I move on any further, uh, my partner is ready, Austin Okon Ackman. Uh, he joins me now as we uh, take this trip uh, together. Uh, greetings to you, Austin. Uh, feels very good uh, to go on this ride with you again tonight. It's part of great things to you, Yemi, and our viewers joining us from different parts of the world, still an action packed sort of sports. Uh, you went through the rundown. I'm like, whoo, we're going to have a fun field ride on the show tonight. Interesting times in the Europa League. I remember when we're previewing the groups, never ever did we think that Manchester United will not top that group. Football for you. Also, uh, talk about what's going on as regards the CAF Confederation Cup. Yeah, me, you were, you were a bit, you know, careful as regards what Plate United and by and Rivers United could do. I'm sure now your confidence is pumped up, you know, seeing those results. We'll have a chance to talk about it. And of course, I love what handball is doing with the development of the sport in Nigeria. Uh, the league keeps getting us talking. I like that it's been consistent. I love the fact that that has now, you know, been used as a springboard to, you know, keep the sport going in the country. We don't get to talk about handball that much in the country in the last four years till Samuel Ocheo and his team came on board. And of course, the one I've always been yearning for uh, getting the sports industry policy working. The Federal Executive Council approved that. I mean, it seems we are beginning to get realistic, get realistic as regards making sports a business in Nigeria. Yeah, I'm excited as you are. We talk about some legislation. If we get some legislation mm -hmm. behind it, uh, we're working towards we're working towards that part. Uh, since you start, started us off on that, uh, let's go on and listen to uh, the sports minister, Sunday Diary, uh, talking about how excited he is at uh, uh, that sports uh, industry uh, policy uh, that uh, will govern uh, the game for, for the next four years or thereabout. Let's listen to him now. We'll come back for more on sports tonight. The approval also covers incentives for private investors in sports development. Approved were the proposed tax and fiscal incentives needed to drive sports as business and also to attract the much needed uh, investment from the private sector. The approval also covers the ability of the sports ministry to drive the application of a medley of funding and financing approaches to develop our infrastructure and to develop our sports. From IOT, which is renovate, operate and transfer, to BOT, build, operate and transfer, to the integrated national financing framework, INFF, and also the Nigeria Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan. All of these have been approved 
as approaches you can employ to boost sports as business. All right, that's it, uh, the sports minister. Uh, obviously elated and very happy. <coughs> uh, very happy as well. Let me quickly uh, introduce our partner in the Lagos uh, studio before we link up uh, with Austin again for his thoughts. Bolu Omoni joins us now. Bolu, uh, greetings to you. Thanks for finding out time to be with us on the show tonight. Yeah, good to be again on a beautiful day where um, Bayosa Quinta, at least uh, what many of us wanted, doing us proud, leading to nil at halftime. And like what Austin said, football will humble you. My United, despite winning, it's not all the time you see a losing team, they are fans celebrating. As Real Sociedad fans, they were excited because despite losing at home, they still finished top of that group. And uh, the two games Nigeria continued had yesterday, 10 goals in those games, except something extraordinary happened. We should at least to an extent say uh, they have one leg in the knockout, in the group stages of the conversation score. But again, in football, uh, it's not over until it's over. We've seen straight things happen. So yes, the first half is done. They have to do the job in the second half. And the World Cup is just 17 days away. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to the World Cup. Uh, of course, uh, Nigeria's not going to be there, but <laughs> not an issue. Uh, you listen to uh, the Minister for Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Diary, and all the talk around uh, this sports industry bill, uh, this sports industry uh, policy. Uh, so, what's your take? Um, I'm one of the, the minister's biggest critics because some things, uh, but if they are doing the right things, you have to still give kudos to them for that because some say, what have they been doing all this while? You say, well, better late than never. Now, they remember there's a 10-year policy for football. Hopefully, they follow through now. There's a plan for... It means we, one of the things we've been saying over time is coming to fruition because we say, that, what are the local people doing? But now that there's a policy in place, there are things that there are guidelines. If you excuse this, we don't know what to do. Now, there are guidelines, but we said four years you may not be here in the next four years to follow through but at least whoever is coming in after him even the sport chairman wherever may not be here in four years but there's something on ground that you have to follow there's through. a template there's a template already so now to our next thing we've talked about the, um, the handball for example that doing something right now we've been asking what have you guys been doing since the winning the election but now they've come up with something many didn't know it when it started but now it's over we know winners for men and women that's what when it says write down your vision this is what it means. You may not be there to see the end product, but the fact that you are part of this beginning, the beginning is always hard. So I like that there's a policy in place now. Hopefully, we won't have to turn away from it in maybe one or two years. Four years, let it be four years. Let us be the ones saying, please, extend this thing. Not you, we telling you, please, scrap this. All right, let, let, let me go to Austin. You're very positive. Do you see any pitfalls? Uh, definitely, because most times, you know, policies fail when... You just think about them on the surface. What's a policy? It's a, a set of ideas or a plan of what to do in a particular situation that has been agreed. So if the ministry says we want to lay down policies that infrastructure development will happen, it has been agreed. What's need to happen now? A principle of action. You know, that's what policies do. So if we just put these things in documents, approved it, Talk about it and leave it. Then, then, then definitely it's not going to happen. But when you walk through it, when you put into a course of action, even when Sunday Diary is no longer minister, someone understands that there's a binding document that was designed for the development of sports in Nigeria and adopts it and follows it through. Implementation, Yemi Abolu, that's what matters because we, we've had documents upon documents on how to develop sports in Nigeria. But I love the fact that Sunday Dari and his team made this an industry policy document, took it to the Federal Executive Council, and it has been approved. And the minister broke down some of the benefits of that industry policy. For instance, we keep coming on television and we say sponsorship, sponsorship. Yeah, I mean, if I want to sponsor sports in Nigeria, what is in it for me? That policy, we provide that requirement and how to bring in investors. He mentioned the part of, you know, bringing in investors towards infrastructure development. We saw a bit of it, what they did with the Abuja National Stadium, and to an extent, some of the partnership that they have, you know, with renovating the Lagos Stadium. We also saw it with the Adopted Talent Initiative, which in some way is part of what we reaped at the Olympics and the Commonwealth Games. Policies guide you. They make you respect yourself, saying that we said we were set out to achieve this. 
So therefore, these documents will guide us in achieving it. So there'll definitely be pitfalls. If people don't share the same unity of purpose, if people derail from the objectives, if it is not clear, a policy document must be clear. That's how you execute it. You know, if someone comes tomorrow now and he doesn't understand the English that's put together in this document, just push it aside. Let's just, you know, work with the little budget we have then. Those pitfalls will become, you know, realistic. So let's just hope that this one won't see pitfalls in it because it's about time, particularly with bringing in investors into sports in Nigeria, creating that business environment. That's what Morocco is enjoying. That's what South Africa is enjoying. Yeah. That's what Kenya enjoyed with athletics and still enjoying it. They put those things into policies mm -hmm. and implemented them. It's about time we do the All same right. thing in Nigeria. All right. I agree with you. I, and both, uh, we, we need to leave this matter all together. But quickly, let me say, in addition to everything that Austin has said, which I agree with 100%, there has to be a shift in our mindset. And that, that's the basic problem. I mean, why should there be a document that somebody just say, I don't like what I'm reading, let me, let me push it away. This idea of seeing sports as philanthropy, just uh, some high do boys are there, let me just throw 10,000 naira at them. No, you can, I mean, it's, it's, you can get revenue. Aside the fact that there's a lot to gain. It's, it's not about just trade money at people or people being at your mercy. That's why I think, plus everything as Austin has said, our mindset. Maybe that's why we even have this policy in, in the first place, just to change our mindset. The revenue is available, everything is available. If we do that, our public-private partnership, everything we need is there, but I think that mindset also is an issue with us. Well, we saw a bit of the mindset um, when Plutu United played their game just um, some hours ago, let me put it like that, yesterday when they won their game, but at half time the NFL president was in their dressing room while the coach was meant to be speaking. We all heard how UK lost hundreds of millions of pounds during the COVID for football alone. Not just, not just football. Just football. Then imagine how much they would have lost in time when all sports were put on hold. Those are people who understand that this is pure business. Some countries till date, the, the where right money is coming from is football. So sports as a whole is bringing in lots of money to different countries. We know of Brazil, like England, we talked about. US before, they were cared about majorly the NBA, the NFL, and the NHL. Now they are bringing in, they are investing lots of money in their football because they know this is a big industry. So I think it's one of the things we need to work on. And like you rightly said, if the mindset is still, football is just recreational. Football is just junk Let's look for who can just gather some boys like you say, oh, Let's do something and use the push boys. It would start knowing that there is money to be made. The truth is, until you try to harvest it, you won't know there's anything there. If you can feel this uh, soil is useless, until you plant something there mm -hmm. and you start harvesting, you know, oh wow, there's something to be made here. I still believe, they said it's difficult, they said it's hard, but I still believe it's not that hard. We've heard about hundreds of millions of dollars of sponsorship in Kenya and the likes. It means we can do the same thing here. If the mindset shifts first and we understand the importance of mm -hmm. partnership, Hopefully in the next five years or ten, we'll start harvesting it. All right. Uh, let's move on on the show quickly. Uh, let's talk some handball. Austin talked about it. Uh, I mean, good times in handball. Uh, we're seeing things uh, making us smile. Uh, let's talk about the handball uh, league. Uh, Canopilla's title win. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. Of course, they've revealed uh, that they will continue uh, to dominate Nigeria handball after emerging champions at the 2022 uh, Premier League at the Indoor Sports Hall of the University of Lagos. Canopilla's rallied from uh, a three-point deficit uh, to level 21-21 against safety shooters in the final game uh, to remain unbeaten in the competition. Uh, Canopy has finished top of the table with 65 points to claim the elite title for the third time after winning in 2019, 2021, and of course this year, uh, 2022. In the women's category, safety babes have retained uh, the title despite suffering uh, a defeat in their final game of the 2022 handball Premier League. Safety babes could not withstand the athleticism and strength of defender babes as they fell 22 to 25 to suffer their only loss of the season. Safety babes ended the season with 52 points. Uh, they are closely followed by defender babes with 49 points, while Shokuto Rima Queens are third with 43 points. So, uh, in for the men, Kano Pillars champions, for uh, the ladies, safety babes uh, champions. Let's take some reaction from both teams. I will come back to talk some more on this and of course also shift to the calf uh calf uh women calf women's league calf
Champions League. I meant so. Very happy to have uh, won the league three times and back to back. I will say I am proudly prudent because we have had five editions, we have won three and came, uh, we are runners up in one. So I'm very happy with the achievement. This team is owned and run by the government. So once if you have motivation, you are well supported, you are well financed, you are well taken care of. So the next thing is for you to get focus. And if you are focused, definitely you are determined. So determination, motivation uh, keeps us where we are here now. We have been together for the past like 10 years. You understand? Some of our players went for professional, like five of them. People thought maybe we cannot do anything, but determination brought us far like this. The next thing is the festival. We are going to pick the gold medal in the festival. Last time we won the league and we still went to the festival and picked the gold medal. So this time around we are still going to repeat the same. We were the defending champions, so we wanted to keep that standard, to keep the pace. So we went back home, did our, you know, mathematics, trained better than what we did before, and we returned here performing better than what, the way we performed last time. The motivation for us is to ensure that we always do the right thing. Because again, if you look at all the teams that in this championship, especially in the female category, everybody comes to one, they want to be safety babes. Whether you be safety babes and you don't win the championship, for you, you are satisfied. And for us, we don't want to go down like that. So we want to keep fighting, fighting, fighting. That is the, the, the motivation behind the, the, the team. And most important, like I said earlier, team discipline. We are going to work much, much higher or harder than we worked before. Because uh, everybody will come out, out for us. Everybody will be coming out, out. And we know because they are going to come out, out, we are going back to beef the team again. Because we know that even though we have won again the second time, there are some other things that we are not right in our team. But those are our secrets. We will know how to package it and we are adjust it so that by the time we come out in 2023, we will come out stronger, much, much better than what we did in this team. All right, that's it. Uh, of course, uh, some reactions from uh, the teams and the administrators. Uh, let me go uh, swiftly to Austin. Uh, you talked about good times on the... Uh, Ocheo and uh, handball, but your thoughts on all that you've seen and another well-organized season, everything concluded. We're already talking about the next season because we're done and dusted with this one. Calabria is already telling us, hey, don't worry, we're, go we're going to be in charge for the next, next few years. I think it was about five years ago that I had to commend the Kano state government because uh, they, are not just, they were not just dominant with football at the time, they were also making their marks in wrestling, they were making the marks in volleyball, and then now handball, the defending champions, and they've won it again, you know, um, three-time champions already. It, it's like deja vu, you know, um, safety babes were, were champions last year, and they played defender babes in their final match. And that was a repeat of what happened again today. Uh, only that they lost, but they still went on to win. There must be something kind of pillars um, seem to be doing for, for handball that they need to start doing for football now because they are dropping with football. For safety babes, you heard the coach say, look, it's a lot of work, self-discipline in there, determination. They understand they are the, that they are the team to beat. So at the start of the league, they had amassed so much point that even losing their final game of the season was irrelevant, didn't do anything to, you know, to their title to beat. So uh, both sides, both for the men and the women retaining their title, Good one for handball in Nigeria. It was in 2020, adorable angels, you hear me? A new team coming into the league, I think from Quara State, stunned everyone to become champions. So safety babes had to dig deep, bounce back last year, and now they are retaining their title. It means there will be more competition next year. And what we just want to say to Samuel Lucheo and his team is that they should keep it going. We love the fact that every year we have something to talk about. This isn't a national championship. This is a league. You know, and we say with the league, you have systems in place, you have a structure in place, you provide support for the national team coaches, you give them a pool from where they can select talents. These are ladies in Nigeria playing handball. We don't we don't normally see this. We only just talk about the women's national team. So this is a very good one. Congratulations to Safety Babes. Congratulations to Kano Pillars. Congratulations to the Handball Federation of Nigeria to followers of 
handball in Nigeria also. Let's keep the momentum going. It's post tonight on channels, television, on that celebratory mood from handball. Let's go on this quick break. When we come back, we're not done with the women. We'll talk about the CAF Women's Champions League. Bayosa Queens bounced back. Got to win anyways. We'll talk about it. Don't go anywhere. Stay. back sports tonight on your award-winning sports loving channels television time to get into the calf women's champions league and just before that break i got over excited bolu ayemi uh because it's half time in that game between biosa queens and tipi mazembe but because they lead to zero i have to prophesy that that's how it's going to end or even more goals bolu i'm sure you can't blame me yeah i i i mean sorry, sorry i jumped ahead of bolu uh, yeah i almost jumped off my skin because i thought we had won and i had to ask bolu <laughs> is the game over uh, but I, no. I, can, I can understand the reason for the excitement uh, and, mm -hmm. we're, and we're all hoping it it ends this way bolu i think i agree yeah. um, well since both of you have seen it uh, even if i said no uh, two beats one, so I think I have to agree with you, Michael, because uh, a draw will still not be a bad result, but you don't bank on a draw. You don't get into games thinking of a draw. Mm -hmm. Then two goals at halftime, based on their performance against Mamelodi Sundown ladies, you should be rest, mm -hmm. you should have lots of confidence that this girl, because their major problem in that first game was they missed lots of chances. They dominated Sundowns, the defending champions. You know, these ladies yeah. can play football. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for them at halftime, two goals. So hopefully, like Austin said, they do more. Or just leave it like that. The most important thing for them at the end of 90 minutes today will be to win. They say in the second half, no goal yet. But they, they, there's nothing wrong if they can pick four points, uh, two points, three points now. And uh, I think they will win the last match. Because even because no disrespect to they got five against Sundowns against today. So, so no disrespect to uh, nothing the, stopping the, giving them three. And yeah, they let everything at least. be equally balanced. Uh, and their destiny will be in their own hands if they win yep. today. So I, I think I agree with everyone. They just have to. Luckily, they are leading. And one thing taking a lead does to you is either you are complacent or you try to do more. You can end 2-0, but not that you didn't try. You try to defend. No, still keep pushing hard, keep playing well, because Tipi Mazebe men, they are completely different from the women. The experiences and everything is different. So I think um, Bayelsa Queens may even get one more goal in the second half, just to be 100% sure. And going to the third game with ease because if they fail to win this game the pressure will be huge on them in a must win game and for sundowns that will play mazembe it won't be a must win they will just take a stroke so mm -hmm. i think um, they have a good result at hand and i believe they will do enough to win that game then in right. the final game just chill all right uh what did that happens to it looks like they're the whipping girls uh, of uh, this group b all right guys let's move on hopefully uh we will be able to uh, rejoice at the end of the game. I mean, I'm, I'm sounding partisan now, but <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, it'll be a good result for uh, by our Sequoias. All right, Austin, let's uh, let's move on, and um, I'll yield the floor to you because, in all in all honesty, you've been very positive uh, about Nigerian uh, Nigerians. But mm -hmm. there's also another person that deserves some credit. Our, our producer Doom Nodio Kota. We we both watched the draws. And he kept on doing the permutations, doing the permutations. And in fairness to him, he said, by the time those other big teams have been drawn against each other, and we looked at the pool and looked at the teams remaining, he was quick to tell me that our teams will get into the group phase. No disrespect to the Libyans, we should be beating them. But then 5-0 is still huge. And I'm pleasantly surprised, Austin. I'm not surprised, you know, I mean, because I dug into uh, those Libyan teams and I said it on the show that it shouldn't bother Bielsa Queens, Bielsa United, Rivers United and Plato United because they were coming off painful experiences from the CAF Champions League and they know that they need to prove a point, particularly to, to say thank you to state governments that have supported them, to fans, you know, um, 
like me, Zoom Nodi, you, Bolu, and other Nigerian fo uh, football followers that, that actually believed in them. There was so much in it for them. I, I didn't see those Libyan sides as, you know, threat to buy out to any of the teams. But what I wanted them to show is superiority, and they did show that. So they need to sustain that momentum. Don't say because you scored two, uh, four goals in the first leg and five for Rivers United, and then you don't give your best. Go away, give your best, because because this is a competition you're getting into the group stage your opponents are watching you you should be better and keep getting better with every match you play that's the charge i want to give to these teams 4-1 fantastic for play two united 5-0 so sweet for rivers united they just need to consolidate on that and keep that look your opponents must fear you even before they play you before the draw is done you know, because that's when we start the permutation. So that everybody's saying, wow, these guys, they're red hot, they're on fire. We shouldn't play them, you know? And if you see the way Rivers United approached this match, you could tell that they were hurting from what happened from the Cav Champions League. They just wanted to brush these guys aside, get the second leg done. I listened to Stanley Guma. He said, look, this is done. We just want to play the second leg and know where we are going in the Cav Confederation Cup. Um, yeah, I mean, we couldn't get... A mansion we will do with this duplex, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, for our viewers who probably are wondering what are these guys talking about, I'll be surprised if you've missed it. But just in case you did, let, let's show it to you uh, once again. Uh, it's going to come up on, on the screen, the results, Bolu. And I'm tempted to ask you, somebody said, I mean, Bolu, look at your screen. Uh, okay, these are the ladies. We'll get to the guys. Of course, these guys. Yeah, fantastic. So, Reverse United, Nigeria, Al Nassau of Libya, 5-0. Plachy United, obviously, of Nigeria, and Al Agdal. Uh, the question for you, Bolu, is can you mess this up? Is it possible? Well, it, it's possible. <laughs> We've seen straight out things happen. I remember... Uh, Seriously. Was it? You can mess up a 5 deal deal. PSG led uh, Barcelona 4-0. 4 And nil. they lost 6-1 in the second leg. Uh, remember, by also Queens lost, uh, Rivers United lost by 6 in the mm -hmm. second leg in the Champions League. If they lose by 6, they're out now. No, you can mess this up. I'm, I'm trying to wrap They my... will not even think about it. It means, like Austin said, they went into this game with anger. I was scared when they dropped, like many Nigerians were after the Champions League. It was so bad, I said, I don't mind letting them play each other. So at least we'll have one sure. in the group stage. Then when I saw these two guys, I think I was on the same page with the Nordis and Goliath. They should do enough. I wasn't expecting five and four goals, but now they've done one leg in. Like San Leguma said, we've done the job, just go there, but you still have to balance yourself. Start well. Because if you shock them with one goal at halftime, maybe the first 20 minutes, okay, they will know there's no hope anymore. But if you get into the game, they score maybe first 10 minutes, they will have confidence that we can come with a comeback. So the best thing is go into the game like it's still goalless. One of the things we say to ourselves, the cycle ourselves, or when we're playing game leader, like even when you score, we start saying, oh yeah, goalless, goalless. So get into the game like you still want to win. If you can get an early goal, it right. kills their morale. But right. I, I think they will, we are in the group stage already. So I agree with Stanley Guman and uh, Fidelis. Okay, uh, let, let me get back to Austin. Um, I, don't, maybe, I don't know why I'm sounding different from you guys. Is it mm. possible to mess up a 5 0 lead? Is there any reason to be cautious with a 5 0 lead? Uh, you should be, I mean, because, I mean, if you don't get into the game like you want to win and you open up those Libyans with gladly score five, score six. But why it's difficult to get to that level that you are thinking, if it can be messed up, is because of the teams. Yeah. If you if you are beating, let's say, Asfa or Esperance or with that, with that Casablanca 4-0, and you are going to Rabat or Tunisia to play, wouldn't you still be conscious? I would, you will yeah, be conscious. Yeah, you know? if, so, if you were those teams... Exactly. So that's why it's difficult to for your brain to process that this sort of result can be messed up, you know. But you can't afford to be complacent because football yeah. is funny, you know. Yes, the examples Bolu gave were in the UEFA Champions League, but he was right with the example he gave about Rivers United. So this sort of game, you go out there because they're going to throw everything at you. The man who is on the, on the ground fears no fall. So they might just... Okay, just imagine if you don't do a first half 3-0, the Libyan side. It won't that motivate them to come in the second half and try to score three more. So you need to approach that game like 5-0 is out of the way, 4-1 is out of the way. 
we, we've seen stranger things in football. I mean, so it's just unthinkable. But with with Al Nazar and um, the other Libyan side, it shouldn't bother play to United or Rivers United. As I said earlier, and I'll say it again, they need to go away and produce a result that we fear other opponents that will make them not want to play them and that will also inspire them to get better but to think about it and whether this sort of result can be messed up or not yeah i mean let's never think about it <laughs> let's do hypotheticals bolu um i mean for laughs if you were a coach or the captain of a team that threw away five new lead what, what would you say <laughs> in front of the press what well they know how to run away from the press so they'll probably not face the press afterwards then. It's more but, of, but if, if, if the press were right in your face, what would you say? For those guys, it's more of what will I say to the governor? What will I say to the minister <laughs> and the chairman? Because it's easier to play on emotions, wear a sad face to the press and tell them it was sad. No, what, it didn't go as planned. It's a number. How will you tell the people that, that are bankrolling you as the bank guys? Is, sad? What, what happened? Five NFF years. president has nothing to do with Police United. He was telling them, if you, if you, you then that's someone that is not affiliated to the club. Then imagine how you tell the governor of the way you get back. Okay, so we sent it to Libya. What happened? <laughs> so it is yeah, harder yeah, that yeah, we... Yeah, I mean, let's put it this way, Bolu. I know it's unimaginable. Yeah, I mean, you cannot just fat on me that you <laughs> blew a five goal, you know, lead. But yeah, I mean, you just need bad officiating from the referee. Yeah. The stuff we saw for Play 2 United in the CAF Champions League, mm -hmm. maybe he gives two dubious penalties and your goalkeeper produced two howlers. You know, the rest. <laughs> yeah, it can happen. Yeah. But I hope it doesn't mm -hmm. happen this time. All right, guys. Uh, we, 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 we need to we need to move on uh, on the show uh, tonight. Uh, let's just quickly uh, leave the continent and go global now. Let's talk about the FIFA uh, World Cup and let's just tell you. Bolu has already let the cut out of the bag, so let's just talk about it. 17 days to go. That's it, right there on your screen. 17 days uh, to go uh, to the FIFA uh, World Cup, Qatar 2022. Uh, and I say again for emphasis, Nigeria will not be there. I think we're getting used to it right now. Not uh, yet. Well, Nigeria will be there, technically. There, there are reports that Patoraki will perform there, and there are reports that Kisdane will perform there. So, Nigeria will be there. Okay, Nigerian music will just, be there. Just where Nigeria just are. Nigeria Nigerian will be music will be there. All right, uh, I'll say a quick one. Um, something this does it feel like? Does it feel like? I know it, it may not feel like for some of us because Nigeria is not there. As much as we try to run away from it, it's not. I mean, I, I probably would have been watching the documentaries right mm -hmm. now. I probably would have been doing that two months ago. I probably would have been digging into the archives. This, I just watch whatever catches my fancy. I don't go the extra length. But if Nigeria was there... All the pre-tournament, nah, pre-tournament nah, interviews nah. and everything. Nah. I don't, I don't. Activations? Nah. nah. But, but does it feel like 17 days? Of course it feels like 17 days. I mean, I'm in England, remember? <laughs> and they're going to the World Cup. <laughs> so every day we get to hear about provisional squad, we get to hear about uh, players who can make it, those who might not make it, you know. So yeah, 17 days to the World Cup, I'm, I'm feeling the vibes. You guys might not be feeling it, but for me, every day on radio, TV, newspapers, it's all about the World Cup when you, you know, pick up uh, those sport pages. Um, but um, as a Nigerian, one way, somehow, you, you still you know, relive the moment. You remember Nigeria's World Cup moment, you know, you, you, you get to, you know, relieve those painful qualifying uh, matches we went through and, and hopefully if we have learned from it. But definitely the World Cup is huge. I mean, even before we started attending the World Cup in 1994, we, we always looked forward to the World Cup, didn't we? Because sure. the World Cup was that big, you know? We made our debut in 94. And with what we did, it now made us start looking forward to every World Cup. Even in 2006, when Nigeria didn't qualify, we thought the world was going to end. It didn't. We watched the World Cup, followed it, and the World Cup was what it was, you know? Uh, so the World Cup is, is, is a global fiesta. It's, it's so massive that you cannot ignore it. The fact that Ghana is going is enough reason for Nigerians to even, you know, catch the feelings, you know, feel the vibes. I said it when we lost to Ghana, that if I get to Qatar to cover the World Cup, Ghana will be the team that I'll look forward to and maybe to an extent Cameroon because we share borders with them and our brothers. So 
The World Cup don't, don't is say here Ghana. already. Just, uh, don't say Ghana. Say something else. You're rubbing. <laughs> you're, no, no. You're just putting salt. Say Ghana. <laughs> you know why you should say Ghana? Because if Ghana stopped your team, your darling team, from being at the World Cup, then you owe such a team some love. For the love of the game. So that's why it's I would say Ghana, you know? It's bonus seeded that way. I'm not seeing anything. Um, Austin, remember the day we... Uh, Played the interview of uh, former NFL president Majipini when he spoke about Nigeria wanting to win the World Cup. So I did an analysis on that and posted it on my YouTube channel. About 90% of the comments were Ghanaians telling us you don't even know if you qualify. So after the game, I had 100. Everyone just said, We told you. We told you. I said, No, don't worry. Go there, come back. We will meet you. But you know, irrespective of what happens, the battle between Nigeria and Ghana will it, it, eternal. After this World Cup, next World Cup, AFCON, it's always there. It is, even when we are not playing against each other, if Nigeria exits the tournament, Ghanaians will talk. If Ghana lose, that, as much as we think we can support our border friends, when or okay, when Ghana lose at the World Cup, Nigerians will see it at the end. Are you there? You are there. What is that? Uh, let me tell you know? my favorite Ghana Nigeria story. That's why I said I said it before that Nigeria Ghana game that most of the guys in this squad, current squad, those on understand rivalry. Yeah. I'm a fan. I'm not, I'm not on the field. Tunisia 94. Nigeria just qualified for the semi-final. I think we beat Zaire 2-0. Two, two goals from Rashid Yakini. Ivory Coast and Ghana were playing. That's Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. Because I dreaded the Ghanaians so much as a little boy. They beat us, they beat, they beat us in Senegal 92. Same stage. I was there on my knees, <laughs> praying that the Ivorians would beat the Ghanaians. <laughs> so that's how much, it, it doesn't feel like that these days, but you know, it does, I, I agree with you when you talk about rivalries and it brings a lot to the game. And I hope this new generation of players would understand, would, understand what it means. You can lose against any other Amy, person. Don't I, lose against Amy, this I saw uh, El Clasico on the, I think on the 12. I know this one's, it's, it's inborn. If you see the fight, the passion, the hunger, maybe the keeper gets the save, the jab, the punch, fighting even at, even at that, you yeah. know that at that tender, they know, there's no friendship between Real Madrid and Barcelona on the field. We can be, hug each other off the field. When the game is Remember done. Remember when Chelsea beat United 4-0 and United fans were hugging? The legends of the club were angry. That why will you lose to your rival and you're hugging? That's what rivalries. Not that they don't talk to each other off the field. But on the field, we are not friends anymore. Here, the rivalry should be what it is not. That's why people say, why would Pep and the club be hugging the same type game? <laughs> will you see Mario and anybody hug? So yeah. that's what rivalry is about. The right. battle on the field. Of All game. right. Okay, uh, let, let's move on on the show. I mean, that was just us getting a bit emotional. Uh, I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't even on the rundown anyway. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's profile some of the teams uh, that will participate at uh, the World Cup. Let's start from Austin's base, and we'll talk about what's going on with the teams there. Uh, and, of course, uh, the Three Lions, that's where we're going. England, uh, nicknamed Three Lions, um, ranked fifth uh, in the world. Of course, I, I don't understand rankings, but that's not an issue. They've made 16 appearances at uh, the tournament, their head coach. Our producer wants the world to know that England is coached by an Englishman. <laughs> Gareth Southgate <laughs> is the coach uh, of England. Captain is Harry Kane. Best result ever, Bolu. I mean, definitely has to be. Two World Wars and one World Cup. Yeah. They still rub it in they our still faces still date. All right. Uh, the, the, the only time they ever won the World Cup, 1966. Yeah, only trophy. Only, only. Maybe the ladies now, though, uh, 1966. And the FIFA code uh, is ENG. When you see that, when you're watching any FIFA competition, you know you're talking about England. All right, let's profile another team. Uh, and there you have it on your screen. Iran um, is the team we're profiling. I remember how big football is. 1998, I think it was Iran, United States, even though they had all their issues. But when it came to football, yeah. it was put aside. The nickname Team Melly ranked 20th in the world. They are making their sixth appearance at the tournament. Head coach is Carlos Queiroz, a Portuguese, uh, is handling that team. Uh, the captain is Hassan Esjafi, and the code is IRN. That's the FIFA code. When Iran is playing, you see IRN. And uh, Bolu, uh, before we get to uh, Austin uh, quickly, how far uh, do you think um, England can go at uh, the World Cup? Uh, a quick one, because you see, after that golden generation, let, let call it golden generation, had uh, Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard, Paul Scholes, uh, Rio Ferdinand, Beckham, Owen. John Terry. I mean, you would think those were the guys that would do, but they didn't, they didn't get anything done. They're already calling this group 
that golden generation. Do you agree? Well, uh, the golden generation couldn't even beat Super Eagles of Nigeria. It, it was like that. But for this one, I think it's more of the talent are more now. Not that if you compare side by side, about 80 million of these guys can't stand those men then. But they have more than you know pull to pick mm -hmm. from this time around. That's what they have now. And it's as a result of the eight-year plan they did some years ago, now they are ripping the food from the 17 to 20 European everything. They got to the semi-final of the last World Cup, got to the final of the last Euros. They've grown in leaps and bounds. But if you check their performance this year, it's been terrible. The year for Nations League, they scored four goals. Mm -hmm. Three were in the final game. One in their first five, and it was a dubious penalty uh, sort of. And also, they're, they're going down. They are going down to league. So, based on, and they tell you as good as your last results. Based on that, you'll probably be a bit scared for England. And they've had lots of injury problems. Um, Chiwa got injured in their last Champions League game again. They don't know how far he's going to Champions League. But despite Kyle all Saka, that, question they marks. still have more than enough talent. Okay. But again, like they tell you, talent is not enough. This is not the kind of football we want. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's a bit confusing. But, but you're there, you're listening to them. Would they want good football or just, just get a job? Which, which one do you think most of the fans would prefer at this point from Gareth Southgate? I think they just want to win. They just, they just want a trophy, you know, because in 2018, they got to the semis. At the last Euros, they got to the final. They were so certain because it was being played at home that the trophy will stay home and Italy took it. They just believe that it's about time to get a trophy. The World Cup, as big as it is, might look difficult, but in the analysis in local media here, they're saying if Croatia can go all the way at the World Cup, then why not England? And the amazing that valid analysis, they can think that way. And, but but that's, that's the fans for you. They just want bragging rights. When you look at the array of stars, it was in the media that Gareth Southgate penned down 55 players for his provisional list, and Crystal Palace's Eberichi Eze uh, was part of that plan. Uh, Madison from Leicester was there. Uh, Danny Welbeck wasn't played for England since 2018, likely to make it. But next week, Gareth Southgate is expected to name his 26-man squad for the World Cup. And that's when the proper analysis will begin. That can this team go to Qatar and do something? But no matter what we want to say about the English team being underachievers for not winning the World Cup since 1966, we cannot take out the fact that they've got talents. It's just maybe how they blend and a little bit of luck. You need luck sometimes, you know, because... If they look at that World Cup campaign and the way we were singing, the, the fans were singing, it's coming home. They would, they would they struggle to understand why it didn't come home, you know. But um, this time around, it's just for them to sustain the momentum, you know what I mean? So, yes, majority of the fans, they believe that it's about time to have a trophy uh, to the Three Lions names. They believe it's time for them to get their world respect that they believe they deserve. And each time they talk about this, they always reference the yeah. league. They say they have the best league in the world. They have the, the most followed league in the world. That the best players yeah. want to come to England to play. That all of that should rub off on their football. And I think I, I agree with them. All right. Uh, we've been having so much fun, but I've just been told uh, that in a minute or two, you have to get out of the studio. All right, let's see how far Ooh. we can go. Um, Bolu, two injuries to talk about. Um, Timo Werner, Germany, a human son, um, undergoing surgery. Looks like, looks like uh, it, it might miss the World Cup. So, how big of a miss those two for their countries quickly? Uh, maybe Vena wouldn't be much of a miss because Germany, lots of Germany can name two, three separate teams, and each one will still probably be feared. But for Son Hyo Ming, is like Son is Korea, not Son is hmm. Asia. Remember, they won the last Asian Games, and I don't think you can call three, four, five players from South, from the whole of Asia. Son has probably to be number one, number two, and number three. Is how big he is. If Son misses the World Cup, there are players. They will still name 26, but believe me, Son alone is a one-man mopo, like they say in the local part. So I think if he misses the World Cup, it will be a huge miss for South Korea. But for um, Timo Werner, I think Germany will survive without him. All right, and, and let's also quickly uh, let you know, Gerard PK has announced his re retirement, well, long time coming. The 35-year-old uh, has uh, announced uh, his retirement from football, and he says uh, before uh, the World Cup takes place around that time. Saturday will be his last yes, game. Last after game. that, after that um, uh, he's done uh, for uh, 
football. All right, uh, let's see if we can get this across the line. Europa League results. Let's see if we can get it across the line uh, quickly. Uh, let's get it uh, on uh, the screen and run uh, through it if we can. We have a few seconds before uh, we leave the studio. We are looking at the ones that have been concluded. Real Sociedad uh, lost to Manchester United, but of course the top of the group final uh, defeated Lazio. Uh, Michelin uh, defeated some grass. 2-0 Monaco, 4-1 victory over Resabe, great. Olympiacos lost at home to Nantes, uh, of course, that French uh, team. All right, so that's the much we can take on the show tonight. Uh, some, uh, some matches still currently going on, but first, Austin, we got to go. As usual, time not always our friend. Yeah, let me just mention the one you would have loved to mention is half time in the game between Arsenal and FC Zurich. And the Gunners lead by a single goal scored by Kieran Tierney in the 17th minute. That's the show. In London, I'm Austin Okonakwa. And in everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports. Bye for now. All right. So, uh, Bolu, I want to thank you for your time on the show today. Yeah. We'll do this again some other time. It's a pleasure being At least I'm here on the day by us of Queens are winning. <laughs> <laughs> That's the show today. We do hope you've enjoyed everything we've been able to bring to you. We'll do this again tomorrow. I'm your Bye-bye now.